All right, guys, quick introduction to the cable that we're talking about. Um, overall insulation, two conductors for power and two conductors for communications. This cable's already been trimmed back, but you can see that there's a shield. Let me get it focused. And behind this main jacket, you know, left this shield insulation intact, but it wraps around the communications. One of these ground conductors is for the main overall, and the other shield conductor is for the, tw the twisted communications pair. So that's the introduction to the cable. And what we want to talk about now is if you're going to troubleshoot a cable problem, you need to isolate your power and communications and put a known terminated resistor value at one end. And I'll show you that. In this situation, we just wire nutted a 120 ohm resistor, which is typical for a terminating resistor on our atmospheric monitoring or tracking system cables. Uh, usually they're in mounted inside the box. Uh, and I'll show you that. So, for in this situation, we're going to have a 120 ohm resistor on the communications. And if we read with an ohm meter on the other end of this cable, through the resistor and back again, we will read the 120 ohm resistor plus the resistance of these two conductors for whatever length they are. Our CO systems and tracking systems is typically a thousand feet sections, so that's usually where you can narrow it down to using this technique and isolate your power and communications. Now we can see both ends of the cable, the terminating resistor, and the other end is it's opened up so that we can meter it. The meter's currently reading in resistance, in ohms. So if I touch the two leads together, we should get a shorted condition and read near zero ohms. If I measure just the resistor right here locally, I should read the roughly 120 ohms, which is actually 118. So now if we go to the opposite end of this short run of cable, and measure that communications. You can see it basically reads the same as that resistor. It's a very short run, and I'm going to show a chart that gives you the resistance you would have to add per thousand foot based on the cable or the conductor gauge and number of strands in that conductor. Now, we know that we're reading good between the communications, 120 ohms, roughly. This such a scenario is 118. So that tells me that we're making good continuity through that particular conduct, set of conductors. But do we have issues between other conductors? So if we leave ourselves connected to one of those comm conductors and go to the shield, for example, what do we read? Well, we're reading in the mega ohms. So, noise, moisture, something, but it's in the mega ohms, so it's not a concern. In fact, we're reading completely open on one of our power conductors. And mega ohms on the other power conductor. So that all looks good. That's what you want to see. Since we're into it, and we know there's nothing connected to the power conductors, there shouldn't be, we can measure resistance across those as well. It should also be an open circuit. Okay, so we're going to say in this situation everything is as it should be. Next we're going to simulate some conditions that are typical of problems on CO cable. And what we've set up here is nothing more than a bucket of water 
not quite real world scenarios, but you will see how it can be affected. For example, if you have a splice in a cable, uh, underground situations, rock falls, whatever, may cause that to be a requirement where you splice the cable from being damaged. And that splice gets moisture in it. This is what we're going to simulate here. So, get this set up to where you can hopefully see both the meter and the water when we submerge it. And the cable, we've got both spliced together is open because it'd be kind of hard to simulate a wrapped jacket, but the principle is still the same as far as seeing that water ground or even corrosion at this point, creating uh, an increase in resistance between the conductors. You'll see what I mean. So here's our two ends again. Here's our resistor. We're going to do basically like we did before. Measure on the conductors of the communications without touching anything else. All right, 118. And then we're going to take our splice, simulated splice, submerging in water, simulating that that splice has a lot of water in it. You'll notice the, con the resistance changed slightly, went down some. So you would think, okay, that's probably all right, depending on your cable length and the cable resistance. But, here's where the difference kicks in. Let's measure over to our shield wires and other conductors. Now we're in the kilo ohms. We're also bouncing around quite a bit. Now these numbers are not going to be exact in your situation, but you can see where we're no longer reading mega ohms. We're reading kilo ohms. And you'll see that result depending on which which Splice butt connector is getting the moisture through it. In their scenario, we're getting it on all of them. Because obviously we submerge the whole thing in water. Okay. Thing to be mindful is the conductor that has the resistor actually went down, but not enough to where it would worry you. It's the other conductors that are the issue. And in your communications, this is a real bad tendency to pull your signal down to where it would be ineffective or intermittent causing communications problems. All right, in this scenario, we're going to show a damaged cable and how it would look like a short. Usually to the shield is how you would find this from a rock fall, uh, the cable laying on the road and getting ran over multiple times. What you're looking at right now is for open circuit. Here's here's the end of the cable that we're talking about. Here's to the shield, to the power, the other power, to one of the comms, the other comm. Everything's open. But if you look at this damage, get a good view of it there. This would be what you look like. And if you look at the other side, it looks pretty good. And it's that's not unusual. So, keep that in frame. I'm going to take a measurement from our shield to this particular comm conductor. Reading it open. If that cable gets flexed just right, you'll notice that it'll go from an open circuit, as it should be, to a short. And these can be very hard to find if they're intermittent. And you can see it doesn't take much for that cable to clear up. But I wanted to show you that. So you can see that the cable doesn't have to look damaged to have damage. and get shorts within the cable. So what we got set up now is a resistor box that can simulate different resistance values. Uh, as you can read on the ohm meter, it's reading the 18.2, which is our 120 ohm resistor the short length of cable, and back again. So, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to set it up according to the chart 
I showed you earlier based on your wire gauges and your resistance per thousand foot. So this number will go up approximately nine ohms for a thousand foot cable of that particular gauge size and number of strands. Okay, so we've simulated approximately eight ohms of resistance now. This would be accurate for 120 ohm resistor over a thousand foot of cable at 16 gauge. Which your first thought is wait the chart said it's only 4.27, 4.3 ohms of resistance for a thousand foot of cable at 16 gauge. Which is true. But don't forget, you're going down a thousand foot and coming back a thousand foot. So you're two thousand giving us an additional eight ohms of resistance, roughly, for this simulator purpose. That's what I wanted to point out to you. So, we measure that, and we read something that jumps up, and now we're reading this. You want to think, that's close enough? It's not. That is another thousand foot of cable, or some kind of corrosion or resistance in that cable. If you got a butt splice, that's been there for a while, don't have water issues, but corrosion is an issue, that certainly could be a problem. And I could go through and I could simulate some of the other more obvious ones, but I wanted to point out to you, it doesn't take much to go from, that's a good run of cable across those two conductors, to looking like it's 2,000 foot or having some corrosion in a butt splice or connection down that same thousand foot of cable. Okay, so, again, thousand foot, good. Just to recap, this is troubleshooting cable. A lot of simulation here, a lot of general numbers. They're not all gonna be fixed. But uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments or contact 